Hello YouTube, Reddit Math here, and welcome back to Jagged Alliance 2. So, we've now taken Sector B-13 to the airport, and the Jurassic Airport is going to be critical to the entire game's success, basically. I uh, really can't oversell that enough. It's the closest thing to a base of operations that I feel like we're ever really going to have. Uh, it's kind of in a corner up here, you know, so obviously we're going to end up moving on to other areas later. But the airport is our supply chain. Like, it's, it's critical that we've secured something that is going to allow us to get supplies flown into the country. So, I've gone ahead and done a little bit of a signing of the mercenaries to just various tasks. Basically, Biff and Flo are both practicing their leadership trait right now. Uh, although it's terrible, they both have the training... Uh, ability and that gives them a huge bonus to their ability to train militia and it's one of their very few redeeming qualities so I'd like to get them both up to the uh, the 20 mark so that they could start you know cranking out uh, our, our latest hit squads to kind of assist with everything here and then uh, everybody else is mostly focused on training up their marksmanship trait uh, as a lot of those characters have that very very low and uh, we'd like to get them to a point that they can actually hit the broadside of a barn. Uh, Fox and Ira are focusing at the moment on training up some militia, so we have a little bit of defensive troops in this sector with us. And then uh, the guys that are all unassigned, they're gonna be doing a little exploratory type walking around for us here. And uh, the reason so many of them is I've just gone ahead Standing and by. positioned them kind of throughout the sector. That way we don't have to spend a ton of time watching them walk around but uh, the deciding factor in who is where mostly has to do with their strength stat uh, because we're going to encounter a lot of these lockers and we're going to need to open them and the only way we have to do that is with a boot hey some 12 gauge rounds that's actually kind of promising so uh, we've got this ACA building Aruko something something. I'm sure that's an acronym that I should probably recognize as being important but I do not unfortunately. Uh, I think that's going to take care of everything in this building. That's from the dead guy earlier. Okay. We'll head back over here. Ready. Grab razor. He's going to do the same to these buildings. Uh, just to note like that little bit of tearing that takes place sometimes whenever okay. uh, moving the camera around. That is not the video. That is actually the game. Uh, it has a lot of artifacting, artifacting on the screen whenever we move around like that. <clears throat> we five and some duct tape. Nice. The duct tape does actually do stuff. Uh, we'll use that to sort of uh, jury rig some attachments later on. Okay, here. I've got Razor is going to be heading through these three houses over here. At least I assume they're kind of houses. They look like they're made out of uh, sheet metal, but hey, Crap. to each his own. Oh, come on, Razor. You gotta be able to do it, buddy. Nothing. There we go, and it was empty anyway. Lovely. Okay, we got a bathroom, oftentimes. <clears throat> These cabinets have first aid kits. Awesome. Okay. So um, that's very good, actually, uh, as a first aid kit might be the difference between us bleeding out and being able to easily save somebody's life. Okay. So we've got in here, we've got like a couple of cabinets and some drawers. Nothing. Don't usually expect to find anything Nothing. in these. Nothing. Yeah. Usually uh, I would recommend always checking. Uh, these sort of lockers, and anytime you spot uh, a first aid cabinet, like in a bathroom, gotcha. those are usually your best bets for any sort of uh, items being What's there. Up? Go ahead and pop up to Bull over here, and he has got some lockers of his own to take care of. He doesn't move nearly as fast as Razor does, though. Nothing. Okay. And we'll take on this one. There's also going to be somebody in here for him to talk to. 
Uh, we'll deal with that in just a moment as soon as we've checked out everything else. So uh, thanks for the clarification in the comments, but uh, Razor has the athletics oh, okay. ability uh, that is the thing giving him that much faster move rate, the much higher uh, action points during turn-based combat, all of that kind of stuff. I knew it was something, I just didn't quite remember like what the ability was. So, yeah. Bull may be slow, but uh, his like 98 or 99 strength means that uh, kicking in doors and bashing open lockers is basically second nature to him. All right, we got a cool leather jacket. If we uh, decide that we want to be a little bit more stylish than protected, early on when we don't have any Kevlar anyway, uh, that's probably going to be something somebody ends up wearing. And then we'll go ahead and chat with uh, this fine fella. Waldo Zammer, certified airplane mechanic. Graduated in 90 from Barlett School of Aviation and Air Conditioner Repair. That seems like a combination of things that shouldn't go together. Um, air Conditioner Repair, Airplane Mechanic, whatever. Uh, Waldo seems a little slow, but uh, we'll be friendly with him. Yep. That helicopter works all right, but you killed the pilot. Of course, there was another fella. Can't remember his name. Saw him around here, oh, not a week ago, wearing big waiter boots. He kind of smelt like a swamp, too. Think he's in some kind of trouble with the army. He was sneaking around, making sure nobody saw him. He's probably one of them draft dodger fellas. Bet the army could really use another pilot, too. You kind of created an immediate opening. Okay, so uh, there's a helicopter here, and we, as he so eloquently put it, we created a uh, immediate opening for helicopter pilots as we shot the last one. And that there's a pilot that he's seen around here uh, about a week or so ago, a guy came in wearing some waiter boots and smelling like a swamp. So what that tells us is somewhere nearby there's going to be a swamp and we're going to find ourselves a helicopter pilot there. Uh, so that's going to be a little bit of a side quest uh, we will be doing soon-ish, although not right away. Uh, let's see if he has anything else. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And if we're direct... Wish I could talk more. can Okay. So that's uh, basically what we're going to get out of uh, Waldo there, is just that the airport does come with some transportation, in this case a helicopter up here and a helicopter pad, but we don't have anybody that can fly it, and uh, we might have to go Standing looking by. for that somebody for too long. And finally, there's going to be a character up here, also very important. I'm Pablo Greco. I run cargo department at airport. You want something? You see me. Hey, right, and here's Pablo. Personally, I don't care who wins the war. I just don't want no more shooting near the airport. All right. And uh, Pablo is not exactly a man concerned with ideals or anything so noble. Uh, whoever paying his salary, that's going to be the person who he's working for. Um... Uh, We'll want to keep a little bit of an eye on Pablo, though, as uh, he's not exactly loyal to our cause. A lot of people come in and out of here, you know. I can't be babysitting your shipments. Well, at least not for free. Hmm, I see, I see. So, uh, Pablo gives us a pretty straightforward... One of those mercs we could do much better without. Yeah, a pretty straightforward response. And, you know, uh, we don't exactly like him. As you can tell from uh, Coyote there's response, but I like him more than the alternative. So uh, as he just mentioned, you know, he can't be babysitting all of our shipments that are going to come in and out of this airport, at least not for free. I'm going to go ahead and withdraw 50 bucks from our bank and go ahead and give it to Pablo. Coffee money. <laughs> Help keep my eyes open if you know what I mean. And, you know, give him a little bit for his coffee funds so he can keep his eyes open. Yeah, so uh, Pablo 
uh, basically, uh, Pablo is untrustworthy and he has a tendency to steal from our shipments. But you can reduce that tendency with one of two things, either a little bit of cash to smooth things over or threats of violence. And they're both equally as effective, but I decided I wanted to go ahead and uh, use the cash route instead of uh, getting Pablo's blood all over my knuckles. The other alternative is you can kill Pablo and he'll get replaced by someone, uh, but the someone isn't exactly competent and he loses your shipments sometimes just from being dumb. And uh, I don't like that anymore. So with the airport now secure, we're gonna pop back into the map screen and over to the laptop. And then we're gonna head to the web. And now this is a little convoluted and uh, like I, I can kind of remember the very first time I played this, like not figuring this out for a very long time. But if you go to aim and there's a link section here with hyperlinks to other websites. Now this wouldn't have done us any good earlier because we didn't have the airport, uh, this stuff would have actually been locked out. But we've got a link to a website for Bobby Ray's Guns and Things. And if we click on it, we uh, find a very interesting website design. This was the late 90s, you know, G GeoCities was everywhere. Uh, uh, you can just forgive them. And uh, this is basically our one-stop shop. If uh, they don't sell it, you can't get it kind of thing. Uh, they sell guns, ammunition, armor, miscellaneous and then a used section with cheaper stuff that's a little bit broken now we don't have a lot of cash at the moment but i do kind of want to shop uh so in here there's a lot of stuff a lot a lot of stuff i'm not going to go over all of it because i really just couldn't cover all of it even if i wanted to but we have some priorities First aid kits are 100 and medical kits are 300. I want to go ahead. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to buy two of each of these. It'll be $800. Ooh, it's so pricey. Uh, and in the delivery location, we're going to choose Drassen which is where we are. And then we get some Overnight Express for $200. Gonna take our grand total up to basically the amount of money we have. Um, we'll do standard service. It'll take a few days to arrive. Will we? No, we'll do two business days. Okay, so 48 hours, we'll have medical supplies on site. That should be okay. Uh, if we get counterattacked right away, We've got like 4% of a medical kit and one first aid kit. So we should be able to keep somebody from dying uh, if they get shot, but we need these supplies quickly. Uh, we need to patch up Haywire. Look at the poor guy up here. Like he's barely hanging on and uh, we don't have the medical supplies to make him much better. So I'll go ahead and accept that order. They'll get right on it. Uh, it's gonna take up a lot of our cash. now. In the not so distant future, we're gonna to wanna to come through here for some weapons. Uh, that would be real great. In the early game, there's gonna be mostly pistols in here. Uh, it unlocks your weapon arrangements like as you make the accomplishments in the game. But we're also gonna find some submachine guns. Not the greatest submachine guns, but like the Scorpion and the SIG MP41, uh, a micro Uzi, those types of things. So they're gonna be primarily weapons that can fire fully automatic uh, and that's all they can do. Like they, um, I believe they, the lack, yeah. So this is the AP cost for shooting them uh, that's shown down here. So you'll see there's a, a dash through single shot and burst. So this is a fully automatic weapon only in contrast to like a pistol that is only a single shot has no burst, has no full auto. Uh, they're kind of inaccurate and you spend a lot of ammunition on them, but from a firepower standpoint, they're uh, a pretty big improvement over your standard pistols. Maybe some scorpions or something uh, might end up getting ordered. So the biggest thing here is this sort of solves our 
uh, supply problem. You know, that uh, we need cash to do it, but we can make cash. Uh, we're now up to 2400 for daily income, which is definitely surpassing our daily expenses. That is very good. Uh, if we pop over to the mine, it's still only operating at 39% efficiency and kind of a balance of our loyalty from the city of Drassen and just it needs to ramp up its production over time. Uh, those two things are sort of combining to, uh, to slow it down a little bit. Uh, now that these guys have uh, done all of their exploratory stuff, I think what I'm going to do... Let's see. Grizzly 81 marksmanship. Grizzly is actually, like, far better than I give him credit for. I think I'm going to get his, uh, maybe, like, his agility up a little bit for the sake of some additional action points. And then me, myself, um, actually, this facility... This is a small airport. Let's you practice strength. And the ACA building can be staffed, but you need higher loyalty. Okay. So we do not have that yet. So instead, I guess I'll go ahead and just train maybe some agility as well. I mean, 76 marksmanship should be fine. Uh, and I'd like to see my agility increased a little bit. Bear, I think he's kind of in the same boat. I think all of our kind of uh, strong but a little slow guys could probably use the agility, dexterity kind of leveling up. And then Razor, you're going to be back on marksmanship training. And there we go. All right, so that's going to be the, uh, the Sector B13 in a nutshell. I'm going to go ahead and advance just a little bit here, and I'll catch you guys on the other side. And unfortunately, I didn't get to advance time as far as I wanted to, as enemy forces have shown up knocking at D13 Dress and Mine door. If I click OK on this, it's going to pop up and auto resolve since I don't have any mercs in the sector. Now, the auto resolve screen plays at like normal speed. Or, well, it's normal speed. But we can uh, double time if we want or even like auto complete it right away. Um, so, you know, it just takes a, a few moments, basically, and we ended up losing six of our guys, but eliminated nine of theirs. It's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, we'll go ahead and click OK on that, and three of our green militia became regular militia. Now, that does point out kind of a concern, which is that if they start beating on our uh, mine repeatedly, we might lose our only source of income. So... Uh, I don't know if I can wait two days for the medical supplies to show up before moving out, but I might have to send a contingent like down around here. I think this path should be clear and we could maybe get them back into sector D13. That might be a job for Biff and Flo since uh, they're going to be training up Militia soon anyway. He's at 14. She's still only at 1. Hmm... But I could see that being valuable. I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, this may prove a little bit questionable. But I'm going to put these two guys on. Make them squad two. And then I'm going to move them out. The uh, oh, That's not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. The enemy AI seems usually um, pretty willing to attack under, like sectors with no paid mercenaries in them. Uh, like the militia, for example, but a little bit more hesitant even if you've got a couple of guys hanging around uh, just to kind of lead your forces. So hopefully that can dissuade them over the next day or so from uh, running the Drass and Mine into the ground, which uh, would be very bad for me. Those guys should be there in just a few hours. Like it's uh, about a 90-minute trip through each sector. Uh, so they should be there by nightfall. And then hopefully we can uh, hold off any additional assaults coming their way. I'm all done. Uh, also, I did change Coyote to be the trainer here, considering his much higher leadership staff than Fox, and just put her back on marksmanship training. Uh, we got a handful of guys. I'm going to go ahead and continue that training for a while. Um, a little bit low on cash, but I'd like to get enough militia in this sector that I feel comfortable leaving it as well. So, uh... I need a nice, warm bed. Okay, Biff. 
He's complaining that he's tired. I know. I sent you marching without letting you rest first, but uh, I think they'll they'll probably be able to suck it up for another sector or two, and uh, finally, they can get some shut eye whenever they arrive back at the safe haven that is the. Mine. I'm learning. Uh, so my intention was to kind of skip ahead to day nine, I think, uh, in order to get our shipment in at the airport. Uh, the medical supplies were going to allow us to patch up haywire, and then we could start getting a move on. Man, we are just like in a viper's nest here, surrounded by enemies. I don't think they're going to let us uh, just quietly wait for our uh, airline airplane shipment to uh, to land. Um, yeah, I was thinking about checking something there, but I don't think I'm going to. Let's uh, uh, check on these guys. If they could just arrive safely, they're just one sector away, so that's going to be fine. All right. I feel faint. I simply cannot go on without sleep. Uh, just give me a little bit longer. You're you're almost there. I have well, arrived. Something I can do now? Thank you. Uh, I am going to actually pop into the sector just to place these guys somewhere uh, so that if we do get attacked, they're not on the edge of the map and like immediately slaughtered. So, yes. Yeah. Um, you know what? We'll let, them, we'll let them hang out in the bar. They can get a drink or something uh, while they're hanging around training new militiamen, I guess. I don't know. Drinking on the job is bad, kids. Don't do it. But okay. if you ever happen to be an international mercenary, I think drinking on the job is kind of allowed. Uh, so we'll just get them in there. They're immediately going to want to crash out. But then we can put them on some practicing of the leadership. Now, at 14, like it may be a few days, but he's not too far away from hitting 20, which will allow him to train militia himself. Uh, and then I just speed up time again. Well, apparently Biff and Flo were not scary enough to dissuade anyone from assaulting the dress and mine. Um, We've got 11 on 11 with Moshe and enemies with two of our mercs to maybe swing the tide of that battle. Although, if and flow aren't exactly the strongest of mercenaries. I don't think we're going to end up playing this fight in this video though. So we're going to leave this on a cliffhanger as will we make it to the morning of day 9 to receive our medical shipments? Will Biff and Flo be able to save themselves from the horrible assault on the Drass and Mine? Tune in next time to find out. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, subscribe to see more videos every single day. Leave a like or a comment if you have anything to say about this or any of my other episodes. And I will catch you guys next time.